The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to another biology lesson for lower seat. I'm your course facilitator, Dama Charles Bovga. Before we start this new lesson, we have to go back to the assignment that I gave you in the last lesson. And the assignment was, how would you identify proteins in germinating seeds? Of course, those are the germinating seeds picture there. You can see germinating seeds. And you know how to produce germinating seeds. Uh, you take your bean seeds, you soak them in water, and you give them some warmth, and they will germinate. Germinating seeds come a lot during the examination at the GCE, and you may be asked to test the cotyledon or test the... Uh, the, the plumule or test any part of the seed for anything. They can set the question to you. But now I want to test for the presence of proteins in the whole of the germinating seeds. So what do we do? The first thing is that uh, it's, a, it's a sample, it's a, it's, a, it's a solid. So we must crush it. And we do that crushing inside a mortar. We crush it. And then the second thing is that we make a solution and we filter that solution. So when you crush, you add water to the crushed bean seedlings, you pass it through a filter paper, paper to get a clean filtrate. So if there was a substance in the bean seed, it is the same substance that will be in your clean, your clean filtrate. Uh, the third step is you carry out a Bowery test. Test for proteins is a Bowery test. There's a Milan test and there's a Zanctoprotic test. But the one that is most commonly used is the Bowery test because the reagent is cheap. Now the Milan's reagent uses uh, um, uses a, 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 a silver a, a, a substance which is a bit poisonous, and we don't recommend that uh, for regular use in the laboratory. So the Bowret reagent is the most used reagent for uh, the testing for protein. So what do you do now? You take a, a clean and dry test tube, and you add you 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 get. Uh, two mils of the extract that you filtered and you put that in a test tube. When you put in a test tube, the first thing in about a test is that you add two mils of hydrogen, uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, when you finish adding sodium hydroxide, then you add five to six drops of copper sulfate in it. As you add the drops of copper sulfate, you begin to shake. You begin to shake it vigorously and you allow it to stand for four to five minutes you will notice that there is a bluish violet coloration or precipitate that indicates the presence of protein. I want you to pay particular attention to this test of proteins. It can be a test of proteins from the, 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 the radical of corn seedlings. It can be from the tester. So you can, you can, you, they can ask you to remove only part of the bean seed and you begin to see where pro, there are more proteins on that part of the bean seed. So violet color, is an indication of a positive Bowery test. So that's the summary of the procedure. You get the test solution, the extract. You add uh, sodium hydroxide. Then you add, uh, you, you, you add uh, uh, sodium hydroxide, copper sulfate, drop by drop you shake, then you see the Bowery, the, the, uh, the, the violet coloration. So you have that summary. So again, the Bowery test is very important. You add sodium hydroxide, then you add copper sulfate. Then as you're adding the copper sulfate, you are shaking. And then you see this blue coloration. 
this test is always very evident. Now, the other substances that can be used and you are tested for this, uh, to, for, to ask you to carry out barrel tests. For example, you can get soya bean that we sell in the stores, in the small sachet. They dissolve it and ask you to, to test whether there is protein inside. It will produce the same result. They can use egg album, not the egg yolk. They crack egg and then release the whitish color and mix it up and prepare a solution. And then it will be, it will produce the same violet coloration. So food substances contain proteins. Now remember that this bowel test can also be used in the hospital. Remember that when blood is filtered in your kidney, the, the proteins are too large to pass through the podocytes of the Bowman's capsule or the capillary endothelium of the glomerular uh, capillaries. So when proteins are found in your urine, blood proteins, uh, uh, blood albumin, it is abnormal. So sometimes when they do a urinalysis in the hospital, they test your urine and they see protein is an indication that there is a problem in your renal functioning. So, these are some of the tests that can be used for protein and what, what, what is the result, observation that you're supposed to get. We've seen the violet test uh, that it produces a bluish violet coloration and when it does that, the test is positive. There is a xanthoprotic test. The appearance of the yellow color confirms the presence of proteins. And there's a Milan test, I told you that, it's a very expensive reagent and the laboratories are not always able to get it. The appearance of a brick red color confirms the presence of protein. But the most used test is um, the bowel red, the bowel red test. So that is how you can test protein in food substances. <laughs> Uh, we're going to enter our, our new lesson for today, that is biochemistry of nucleic acids. And as, as the, the lesson goes, we're going to build up the content gradually so you have a proper understanding of what nucleic acids are. As usual, our lesson plan is um, clear, objectives, prerequisites, real life situation, lesson activities and exercises, and then the assignment, and then the assignment. So that's our lesson plan. And the objective will be to describe the nature, take note, the composition, take note, and the functions of nucleic acid. Nature, composition, and function of nucleic acid. Now, what is our uh, prerequisite information? Uh, learners are already acquainted with biomolecules and biological rules. So nucleic acids are another example of biomolecules that we're going to understand. So we've started from uh, 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 lipids, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and now we are on nucleic acids, and we're going to gradually uh, get detailed information about this special biological molecule. So what real-life situation can we uh, bring to focus? Uh, the real-life situation is that the diversities we see in life is due to the presence of nuclear acid in the living things. So those nucleic acid, is, is it this diversity that we have? Is it at the caused by the presence of nuclear acid? We're going to come to understand this as, we, as, the, as, the, as the lesson unfolds. So what's the scientific problem? Nucleic acids are the principal source of genetic material in living organisms. So the variety we have is because of genetic, uh, the genetic material of nu nucleic acid in the cell. So it is not in every part of the cell that will have nucleic acid. It is concentrated in the nucleus of cells. We don't have nucleic acids uh, in the mitochondria. We don't have them in the, in, the, in, the, in the ribosomes. We have them in the nucleus and another type in the cytoplasm. So we're going to see this nucleic uh, acid. Nucleic acid are the principal sources of genetic material in living organisms. So organisms constitute or they have nucleic acid, and this nucleic acid determine and control what we see, the variety we see in nature. So what is the hypothesis from that scientific problem? The hypothesis is that nucleic acids are responsible for the diversity we see on Earth. And the new hypothesis will be that nucleic acids are not responsible for the diversity we see on Earth. We're going to see whether these changes, the diversity we see, are really uh, at the base, nucleic acids are at the base of these diversities. So it is very important. Now uh, we're going to do a little activity. 
a little activity that will bring us to the picture of this lesson. And the picture, the, the activity, is the fact that in the home we can carry out simple experiments. And so I call it the activity Science at Home. You must not come to the lab before you do this, this uh, science activity. You can do it at home. It will say that the, uh, what we see is controlled by uh, the DNA or the nucleic acid that is found in the individual uh, living organisms. Then we can carry out a similar experiment to see if that is true. So the first thing is that you see if there is nucleic acid in the living organism. We can get banana and extract nucleic acids from banana. It's an experiment you need to do at home, and you can only do it, you don't need a teacher to help you. When you follow these instructions, it is all done. So what is the step one? You use alcohol. You keep your alcohol in the, in the fridge and let the alcohol freeze. Let the alcohol be cold. So you use cold isopropyl alcohol uh, in the fridge. Now number two is that make sure you have a ripe banana for this experiment. Bananas are common. Bananas are common. So pick one of the bananas as you see in the picture. So that's a ripe banana. So we want to see if this banana has nucleic acid. We can take purple to see if it has nucleic acid. And whether the, if the appearance of purple and banana is different, it means that something is there controlling the appearance of that banana. So make sure you have a ripe banana for the experiment. So in step three, smash the banana inside a plastic resealable uh, freezer bag. There are some plastics that have, uh, you can seal them out. So you take your banana, peel it, put it inside, and then you smash it. You use smash it with the plastic into a paste. So you do that, and then in step four, you combine hot water and salt in a measuring cup. And then you put the hot water directly from the first set into the measuring cup until you have a half Half, uh, half, uh, uh, it is half full. So you have about 120 mils of um, the hot water. Use a spoon to mix the water with one teaspoon of salt until the salt is completely dissolved. So dissolve some salt in the water. The quantities are there. So what do you do next? Step four. So that's the, the, the step uh, we're looking at pictorially. So you mix, put the water, and then you put salt. So in the picture, you see that water is put, hot water is put, and salt is put, and you mix them until they are completely dissolved. Now step five, mix the salt water, uh, mix the salt water mixture with the smashed banana and allow for 30 to 45 seconds. Inside the, the banana is already inside the plastic. So you are putting this inside the plastic, resealable, resealable plastic, and you leave it for 45 seconds. Then you reopen the, uh, the plastic resealable bag and carefully pour the salt water mixture into the bag with the smashed banana. So we're mixing salt and water mixture into the banana. So at the end, you see what, what the pictorial representation is doing? We're creating a smashed banana mixture. The salt water and then the banana smash inside the plastic, the plastic bag, a resealable plastic bag. And then um, we are extracting um, uh, uh, the step six, we add liquid dish soap, uh, liquid uh, dish uh, uh, soap into the bag. So we have liquid soap that we use to wash dishes in the kitchen. We add it and mix it with a banana and salt water mixture. You use also a measuring spoon to add, uh, 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 to add uh, this liquid, uh, uh, this soap uh, dish uh, washer liquid into the resealable plastic. So you add about 2.5 mils of it. So you see now that we have smashed banana, we have salt water mixture, and then we have a, a liquid soap. So that is a liquid soap, the soap, uh, soap dish. You see now that you are pouring it inside the mixture of salt and water and the banana smash. We are putting it inside already. So that's a pictorial representation. So that's a pictorial representation. Now, uh, the step seven, uh, we attach a coffee filter to the top of a glass, uh, a narrow glass with an elastic. You see that you put a filter and then you attach, uh, because we're going to pour that mixture to, to, to drain it, to drain it. So we attach a coffee filter into, you know, onto the top of a narrow glass with an elastic. And then when you do that, you now pour the contents of the back into the glass. 
So when you pour it, something will remain on the filter and a liquid will pass into the glass. So a liquid will separate it from the banana into the glass. And you can have the contents, the liquid part, and the deposit uh, separated. So step nine, add the alcohol that you freeze at the start slowly into the filtered, uh, tilted glass. So you've gotten the liquid is in the glass, then you are adding the alcohol into the, 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 the contents of the glass that was filtered through the coffee filter. So you're adding the alcohol that was frozen. So what do you expect? Now you set a timer, leave for about eight minutes, and do not touch the glass. So you keep it quiet, I do not touch the glass. During the eight minutes, watch the glass for bubbles and movement. As mentioned, DNA molecules are currently dissolved in the banana soap water mixture and the alcohol mixture. So there's DNA there, one to uproot. Now, you still leave the glass on, uh, on the counter for uh, another eight minutes. You leave it uh, after adding the alcohol. You leave it again for eight minutes. And then uh, in the step 10, the combination of the alcohol, the salt, causes those, the DNA molecules to precipitate or develop into a solid. So when you add the alcohol, it will cause the DNA to precipitate on the bottom of that liquid. And uh, uh, remember that the alcohol is from the freezer. So the lower temperatures will allow DNA molecules to form. That's why the alcohol, the cold alcohol has to be added and the deposit of DNA appears at the bottom of your flask. Now look at the last picture, it's interesting. So you see that deposit at the bottom of uh, the glass. Then you can use a, 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 a glass rod and you carry it out. So what, what is carried now like this? This is DNA. This is DNA in a banana. This is the banana DNA. This is the banana DNA. So you have succeeded in extracting banana DNA. So that's an activity you can do at home. Science at the home is very exciting. Most of the things you do in the kitchen, most of the things you do at home, they have a scientific background. So relate, always relate the things you do with the, your scientific knowledge. It is going to help you. So we have succeeded to extract banana, to extract DNA from banana by those steps that we have uh, described. So that DNA we extract is what we call nucleic acid. That DNA we, ext we have extracted from banana is what we call nucleic acid. So what is now the nucleic acid? So nucleic acids are long chain, nucleic acid are long chain polymeric molecules. So they are long chains. So long chain polymeric molecules. It means that they have monomers. The monomers are repeating units. The monomers are repeating units. And um, these units are called nucleotides. These units are called nucleotides. So that DNA that we extracted is called nucleic acid. And when you go to the chemistry and do the structure of that nucleic acid, you're going to see repeated uh, monomeric units called nucleotides. They, change, they form together, they link together to form a polymeric molecule called polynucleotide. And we have two kinds of DNA, uh, nucleic acid. There is deoxyribonucleic acid and there is the ribonucleic acid. Remember that we saw that pentosis uh, in the monosaccharides were related to these molecules. Remember that we saw a ribose. Ribose is a sugar in RNA and deoxyribose is the sugar in DNA. And the difference between deoxy and oxy is the loss of a hydrogen atom at the carbon atom number two in the pentose sugar. So you see that we just succeeded to extract DNA. What a wonderful experiment. You can do this at home and it's become very exciting. And the material, the, the, the material to use are not expensive. You can buy that alcohol from a, a small medical shop. Uh, just 500 francs, you can buy it and then freeze it and you can use it for this experiment and you'll get DNA in your hands. So, we have nucleic acids and that's our focus. I said, Greg, we're going to build our knowledge on nucleic acid because we are tend to, we're already seeing that there's a relationship between nucleic acids and proteins because nucleic acids will determine the sequence of proteins and we've said Protein sequence is very important uh, in the life of an organism. Therefore, the sequence 
and the nucleic acid, they're also very important in the life of an organism. So what are the components of nucleic acid? What's the chemical composition of nucleic acid? The nucleic acid that you isolated, we want to talk about the chemical composition. What, are the, what is the chemistry of that thing? So we're going to start building up the chemical structure of the monomers, the nucleotides, chemical structure of uh, the, 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 the polymers, the polynucleotides. So the, the first component of uh, the nucleic acid is that, or the first idea is that they contain carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, and even phosphorus. So those are the elements that make up nucleic acid. But these elements are organized into three compounds, and the first compound is phosphoric acid, and the second compound is a nitrogenous base, and the third compound are the sugars. So when I start seeing how monosaccharides are incorporated into delicate structures that control the expressible characteristics in living organisms. So we're going to start looking at those structures one by one. So we'll look at them one by one. So we have phosphoric acid, nitrogenous base, and sugars. So nucleic acids are responsible for the synthesis of proteins in the body. So the polypeptide chain we talked about, the base, the starting point is nucleic acids. We're going to see that under this topic. So nucleic acids determine the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. And these nucleic acids are important in the synthesis of every protein. So every single protein with a specific function is determined by a particular sequence of a monomers in the nucleic acid. And then RNA as a nucleic acid is a vital component of protein synthesis. We're going to see that. Loss of DNA content is linked to many diseases. We're going to see that when your DNA becomes disorganized, it becomes a problem. I gave an example of an albino and a black colored young two children. One is an albino, one is black colored. That the difference is only because there was loss of DNA information in the, in the, along the, the synthesis of the melanin. An amino acid was not put in its position because the information failed to be brought to that place by the DNA. So a disease, albinism, uh, a condition, albinism, was developed. There are many DNAs when there's problems with DNA, when there's duplication of, uh, of genes, we're going to see gene mutations will bring about so many problems. We're going to look at that. And uh, we're also saying that DNA is an essential component required for transferring genes from parents to offspring. If you look at some of you uh, in class who resemble your, your parents, why, have you ever asked the question why? Because some characteristics of your parents have been transferred to you and is in the instrumentality of genes. And these genes are, are, are actually what we're talking about as nucleic acid. So it's very important. So all information in the cell is stored in DNA. DNA is the control center. And we said DNA is found in the nucleus. So DNA is found in the nucleus. So we're going to be establishing uh, that fact. We're going to be establishing that fact. DNA in the nucleus. Now there is also a gene technology, DNA technology called DNA fingerprinting. We're going to come to that. And it's a method used by forensic expert. Forensic science is science that will help you to bring back information of, uh, on a scene that already happened. If this came to your house and touched the, your TV and stole, they can use forensic science to bring back the fingerprint, uh, uh, fingerprints of the thief, and they can identify the thief. So that's genetic uh, DNA fingerprinting. So used by forensic experts to de determine paternity or determine a crime scene. It's already used to, okay, used to identify criminals too. So genetic fingerprinting is also a very important thing we're going to study. It has also played a role in studies regarding biological evolution and genetics. Today we talk a lot about genetic modified for GMOs and many things, uh, how genes have been modified, uh, some for desirable purposes and some for harmful purposes. So they can, they can use gene modifications in biological warfare. They just come and play with the sequence of uh, the genes in the DNA and the desired result will now be a different, a different one. So that is very, very important. So those are the general functions of DNA. Now if we come back to our real life situation, which was talking about the fact that nuclear acids are the basis of the diversity and specificities of characteristics that we see in organisms, then we see that it is true. 
Now we have extracted banana in DNA. So banana has DNA. Popo has D its own DNA. You have your own DNA. A mango tree has its own DNA. That is why a mango tree cannot produce banana. That's why a banana plant cannot produce popo. Because the specific DNA in them will lead to the specific production of its attributes. So banana is banana, mango is mango, man is man, because of the DNA constitution. So that is very important. Because of the DNA constitution, we can see these desirable characteristics. We can see them. So, but before we, 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 we got a standing problem, we now had formed the hypothesis. And there was the alternative hypothesis that nucleic acids, nucleic acids are responsible for diversity we see on Earth. Of course, banana is, has, is, is banana because of its nucleic acid. As I said, mango is mango because of its specific nucleic acid. The nucleic acid of uh, uh, mango is different from the nucleic acid of, of banana. So they both will help to produce uh, proteins that will express themselves differently in these living organisms. That is why an individual A is totally different from an individual B. Even you as a child, your parent, you are not exactly the same as your father or your mother because there was a mixture of this um, uh, genetic material from the both parents. So every living organism contains DNA and that DNA is responsible, nucleus are responsible for the diversities that we observe on Earth. So it is very, very important. So DNA is a very important molecule. And I want you to take interest as we go into this lesson of DNA because there are many things that will be unfolding. You will now understand why things are happening. You now understand why uh, X is different from Y. Why organisms are different. You cannot bring them uh, to, on the same fold because of that, the diversity in the genetic content. Now let us um, go back, uh, you know, go to now our assignment. I'm going to leave with an assignment today and the assignment will be to describe an experiment to show that DNA in the nucleus is genetic material. It's going to be an exciting experiment and we're going to use an organism that you will come to know for the first time, an alga called acetabularia. So we're going to see the acetabularia experiment in the next class. But I want you to read detailly about this acetabularia. So DNA is genetic material and the hypothesis that DNA is responsible for the diversity we see is true. So what we extracted from the banana is what makes the banana banana. It's different from what makes the mango mango. So that's an important starting point for our understanding of DNA. So describe an experiment to show that DNA in the nucleus is genetic material. And of course, you can get that experiment on acetabularia for this assignment and that comprehensive area of biology a constant application. And you can also look at the wiki how, how you can describe, uh, how you can extract banana from uh, uh, nucleic acid from banana. So we've come to the end of this lesson and our next lesson will be again on nucleic acids. <laughs> Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndom esakina bia dinki do mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen